And we're live. In three, two, one. Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 and we have came to the end of the review part of the Spider-Man series. If you enjoy this review and any of the other reviews and all the other videos that I've done in the past, like, share, subscribe, join the madness, follow us on Discord, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the works. This is Spider-Man No Way Home. This is the conclusion to the Spider-Man series that I started like three months ago, I would say? Two months ago? No, it was like four months ago. Try looks like, like I'm trying to reach for thoughts, but yeah, like four months ago I started this. We started with the Maguires, moved on to the Garfields, and then alternated from the Hollands and the Hardys, and we are now here with the final Holland film. Technically, we can throw Morbius in this whole series, but we'll get into that in the next video. Critics rate this film a 9.3 out of 10. While audiences also rate this film a 9.8 out of 10. This film's budget was $200 million, and they boxed off his back, as of right now, because I'm pretty sure that it's back in theaters, in certain theaters, with an extended cut version of this, $1.901 billion. So this movie made a shit ton of money. Now, pros, cons, comments. Um, I'm just going to say cons, because... I only have one. My only complaint in this entire Holland series has stuck through. I don't like the actor choice for Flash. There's the cons. Moving on to the comments because I'm going to go on for hours about the pros. They are picking up right where they left off from Far From Home, so that's a good continuation of this story and everything. Um, noticing that uh, Strange had contain contained the spell, but it didn't really hold the uh, multiverse. There's people illegally shooting fireworks right now. So, uh, don't mind the background noise. Uh, it didn't hold the multiverse because they broke their way in because magic and cracks in the spell and yada yada, all that fun jazz. Um, Strange is essentially an angry, overbearing, but protective grandpa in this movie, which I don't mind. He, he plays a good part in this film, and it's quite hilarious. I noticed in some scenes, which they kind of, it may just been the way the shadows looked, in the, the scenes that he was in, but it kind of looked like they did a slight redesign to the lizard, not like 110%, because in some shots he looked like how he did in The Amazing Spider-Man, but in some shots he looked like he had maybe like his eyebrows like made him look angrier. I don't know, maybe just been the shadows or whatever. There was the Easter egg of Electro's soundtrack when he first appears into the film. <laughs> I was probably the only one in the theater that actually marked out for that because I enjoyed Electro's soundtrack in Amazing Spider-Man 2. He's the only good part of that movie, and he will continue to be the only good part of Amazing Spider-Man 2. Pretty much all the original cast from all the other films, you can kind of see like when um, Osborne's like uh, personality switches from like his normal like trying to like. Get trying to be helpful, trying to like uh, whimper away from his evil side to the maniacal side is when he was trapped in the uh, the 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 wizard, the wizard dungeon cage cell thing, and just the expression on his face just like flipped like a coin, like very subtly, but you can see it, and I actually enjoyed that little hint right there, which also kind of ties into the ability of Holland Spider-Man to sense when uh, Osborne's like personality is flipping back and forth or like whenever you can tell like who is actually in control of like the Osborne's mind and that's actually really interesting that, and cool that they threw that in there as well. Um, the scene where uh, Holland's on top of like Osborne's chest and he's like punching him like over and over and over again. By the way, Osborne did do his own stunt in this film that is actually a pro I had I'm, I written down but he did do his own stunts but he was getting punched by Holland Spider-Man and he like turns and looks at him and starts laughing maniacally. <laughs> that was actually not in the script. That was actually thrown in by William Defoe by himself, like right then and there. They didn't expect it. It actually scared some of the filming crew because of how genuine it was. 
But it got put into the movie for how great it was because it was perfect for the uh, the Goblin character. Maguire kind of like helped ha hyping up Garfield. Um, it, to me, watching it again the second time, uh, it was kind of interesting seeing that and then after seeing No Way Home the first time and how fans were like saying that Garfield was one of the like people who stole the show with his performance and how like they're like hey we should give him a second chance because he actually was really good as Spider-Man and everything and pretty much saying like oh he's not a bad Spider-Man or whatever and then going back and watching it again and seeing uh, Garfield Spider-Man kind of talk himself down saying that he's a loser and that he's a nobody and McGuire saying oh you're not a loser you're amazing and everything and like it's you're not bad you're good it's kind of like Maguire is speaking for the fans who are like, hey, Garfield's not bad. He's good. So I like that. The CGI team who did Sandman's um, sand gliding through the air stuff was actually the original CGI team from Spider-Man 3 who did Sandman's uh, CGI stuff in that film. So this is kind of something I, I kind of looked, saw at the ending. Holland kind of gets three different endings. So you have the uh, ending with him, Mary Jane, and Ned, or MJ, I should say. Him, MJ, Ned. And, like, it's kind of, like, awkward. It's kind of, like, nervous -y and everything until he kind of, like, makes a decision saying, okay, well, he's not going to tell them because he wants to keep them safe. The awkwardness of it kind of made it seem like it was his version of, like, a, a McGuire ending and then his second ending was at the cemetery with uh, Happy and over um, Aunt May's grave very somber very like sad but also kind of like uh, hey trying to lo look at things saying things are looking up things are going to get better it's kind of like a Garfield ending because his entire two movies were like very somber very sad very dark but always ended with like hey things are going to look up eventually then he had his own personal ending where he combines his idea of the spider suit from the two other Spider-Man and make his own. Yeah, the end credits scene. Two things to say about that. There's when Hardy disappears, a bit of Venom gets left behind. So now there's going to be a symbiote crawling around in Holland's universe. Which leaves the question. Which universe was Tom Hardy's Venom from? He's not from McGuire's because that Venom's dead and Holland doesn't have a Venom until now so theorizing and this is going all over the internet for theorization and I'm kinda gonna back up with back back it up with my own I'm going to agree and say that Tom Hardy's Venom is from the Garfield universe because number one look at the settings very dark very dreary very kind of bluey damp ish kind of color for the most part when it comes to like the tint and the filming both made by Sony alone they kind of have similar themes ish except Venom's more comical and they have never interacted with each other he's on this side of the map in California Garfield's on where are my hands Garfield's on this side of the map in New York City so the pros um, First and foremost, I want to say when they released these trailers, they did a really good job at hiding a lot of like material and a lot of like surprises throughout this movie. I mean, yeah, you had the villains and everything and what and whatnot, but I mean, everyone kind of figured that it was going to be obvious that they had Garfield and McGuire in, but the fact that they kept them out of the trailer until theaters hit, that was a great move. Um, some uh, characters that I thought... I enjoyed having in the movie. You have Jameson, Matt Murdock, the Daredevil from the the Netflix TV series, Doc Ock, the Goblin, Lizard, Sandman, Electro. Of course, the two Spider-Men. Just with the original cast coming back was amazing and everything. When they first started the film with the universe knowing who Spider-Man was, they did a really good job of showing the overwhelming feeling that. Uh, Park, uh, Mag um, yeah. Holland's Parker is going through of the overwhelming feeling of everyone knowing who he is and everything and that was portrayed very well especially for someone who's portraying a kid like that um, first time I think in the live action setting that they had uh, they talked about the multiverse but they actually never did it until this movie and this one did really really good based off the numbers 
from the critics and the audiences and the, the numbers they got in the, bo the box office. Um, I really enjoyed the, uh, the bridge scene with Iron Spider versus Doc Ock. It was very entertaining to see that because Doc Ock's never fought a Spider-Man with spider arms like that and it actually kind of made the battle felt even for the most part. Osborn battling his demons throughout the film, that was also portrayed very well. You, you could see that he's struggling and he's trying to keep that inner demon from breaking out and, and just wreaking havoc and destroying everything. He's actually wanting help, wanting to cure himself, but he just doesn't have that much control of the goblin demon in his head and it just eventually takes over and just you know, wreaks havoc and creates the sad parts of the movie. Everything I'm going to be saying here is done very well. The connecting of all the Spider-Man stories all together, the chemistry that the uh, actors had, all of them in general, was fantastic. Uh, Doc Ock's redemption story throughout this film was great. I actually was very heartwarming to see Doc Ock be able to get control of his arms back and to be able to him express of how he can actually hear himself think and it's all quiet in there and he's not other voices just like whispering in his head and everything. Trippy interdimension shit. It's the last thing I have written down before I actually go into more of the writing. The inception geometry shit with the fight between Do uh, Doctor Strange and, Sp and Holland Spider-Man was very entertaining. Basically this film's biggest pro and its strong point is the writing because they were able to continue and finish Holland's trilogy while also somehow not really like wedging them in but just finding a good way to write them in without making a bunch of multiverse screw-ups and tying them together into a great story with all these other two Spider-Man and just, it just it's done so well like they actually took notes from the um, animated uh, Into the Spider-Verse movie. This film is basically perfect, is what I'm trying to say. It's a good trilogy, it's a good send-off for all three Spider-Men. It's a good send-off for all the villains in this film because they got the ending that they should have gotten, I believe. A lot of redemption, a lot of like turning around, a lot of turning the new leaf, ending their ways. It's just... It leaves me speechless as to how they did this so well and so perfect. And they waited the right amount of time to get this movie done. And it is by far, as the box says when I bought it on DVD, is the best Marvel film probably ever. And it's going to be a long time to knock this one down because I am going to say a number... That's probably going to bewilder some people. But this film gets a 9.99 .99 out of 10. Basically perfect. A part of me does want more of Venom in the story instead of just having him as a cameo at the end. But it also works at the same time for what he has been given in this story. But a 9.99 .99 is kind of a hard number to beat for a lot of movies I've reviewed, and that's probably going to rank this as the highest Spider-Man film on my Spider-Man series list. But, sometimes the rankings that I give, like the ratings I give for the film, don't really matter when it comes to the rankings. Sometimes. This is my Check 95, and you'll catch me at the Spider-Man rankings video when I get to it. I have a lot of movies to get through.